Hi Derek, I thought I'd need to make this video just to explain it to you. Uh, it's a lot easier this way. But basically, the relays have absolutely nothing to do with the temperature at all. What are the relays are going to be doing is they're going to be powering on and off light sockets. Um, or, or pumps or skimmers or anything like that, right? So how this is going to work, let's take a, let's take a light bulb for example, right? If we had a light bulb like this. It's 110, 110 volts. All right. And what you traditionally have is you have your power that has to, to power the bowl, is you have your live and your neutral. So your live wire would come through into the bulb here, connect out to the other side. So you have your live and your neutral. And this would essentially, the, the bulb would be on if you plugged it in, right? So what the relays do is we take the live wire, for example, and we run it through the relay and reconnect it to the light bulb. So this no longer exists. And the path runs from the live into the relay and connects out back to the light bulb. So what happens now is the relay has the ability to cut the power to the bulb, thereby switching it on or switching it off. Now the reason why you have three pins over here is basically one of them means normally closed and one of them is normally open. Which means that when the relay is off, is the, should the light be on or should it be off? And if you're not happy with the way that it's set, then you would switch it to one of the other pins. So that's essentially how this relay works here, right? So there's three pins. Remember, the one is your live, which is going to go in. It's going to uh, uh, and then offer you two options, right? Normally closed or normally open. And then when the relay gets actuated, the normally closed or the normally open option will be flipping back and forth, which is what will cause the uh, the wire to actually the path to be reconnected or disconnected, reconnected or disconnected, right? And again, the normally closed and normally open means what's the state? When this completely has no power, is the light on or off? And depending on what you want to choose, you just switch it accordingly, right? So the primary purpose for this whole relay um, is ultimately for all your relays to be wired to sockets. So, and this is 110 volt sockets, right? So each relay would be wired into a 110 volt socket. Let's do another one here. And then what would happen is, is you would you would plug your sump, your sump into here, for example, and you would plug uh, an actinic light here or a normal daytime light or uh, pumps, whatever it is that you wish. Then basically each one of these you're able to control through the JFish system and the JFish system, depending on the, or based on the schedule, will be able to power these devices on and off, uh, depending on how you like it. Or if you wanted to, you can switch it over to manual control, and you can actually independently actuate these different relays as you please. So that is the purpose of the relay. It's so that you can literally um, cut power or, or control power devices by switching them on and off. Uh, this is something that I think I'm probably going to make a video about uh, on how to connect this up. And there's two ways you can do it. You can either cut uh, power devices uh, at the DC level if they offer that, or you can cut them at an AC level. That can get a little bit complicated. I think that the best and the safest way to do it is to actually wire them up with 110 volt uh, sockets into each one of these. All right, I'm going to do a separate section just on that and uh, uh, show people or educate them exactly how to do this. Something that you normally might want an electrician to help you with, or if you're pretty handy and you know what you're doing, you're more than welcome to go ahead. All right, so um, let's put this aside um, for now and let's get the temperature sorted out. So here I've got my Raspberry Pi and um, again, Pin number seven is used, which is GPIO4. If you actually look at the Raspberry Pi pin map, you'll see that, which essentially on the pin count, it's number seven. Um, starting at the uh, the top left, it's pin one, then the one next to it is two, three, four, five, six, and seven, as you go down the line. Uh, I think I have the pin number in here. I can show you exactly how that corresponds again. 
you can have a look on this you'll see that uh, pin 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 I'm talking about this pin here GPIO 4 which is pin 7 this is the one that you want to uh, use for your temperature sensor okay so let's get onto the wiring there I can show you how this works so this is what I wanted to see and that's basically your temperature sensor wired up to your Raspberry Pi and it had nothing to do with the relay if you actually ran power through that you'd probably end up burning the uh, burning the temperature sensor up but the way that I saw that you wired up couldn't cause any harm at all so I wouldn't worry about that uh, I, only if 110 volts ended up going in there you'd, you'd see a few things uh, burn out anyway so let's have a look at this so um, we have the, the the positive and the negative I've got this in a breadboard and then you have the the signal wire which is uh, what's actually in what actually ends up being plugged into GPIO 4 pin number 7 okay so um, looking at it on the breadboard configuration it can look a little bit more complicated um, but I'm going to draw it out on paper just to make it clearer so basically what I've got is I've got my temperature sensor plugged into this uh, breadboard positive and negative then on that track the positive and negative I have wired to the one onto the 3.3 volt um, pin 1 and uh, a ground any one of them and then your GPIO which I've wired into here which connects to this white wire is going on to GPIO 4 okay and then the resistor now I didn't have a 4.7k resistor so what I did over here is I actually I joined three resistors to give me the same resistance value and I bridged the uh, the the data the yellow cable I bridged it um, across to the positive terminal over here as per the the wiring diagram if, if I show it to you in the wiring diagram it's obviously a lot simpler right so let's get down to that alrighty get a new page over here so basically well, let's let's do this we have the positive here and the negative okay and then I'm going to give this a D for data pin all right so this is a positive 3.3 3.3 volts which is coming from pin 1 on your Raspberry Pi and by pin 1 I literally mean pin 1 up at the top left that's going to give you 3.3 volts right the next one's going to be your ground and a ground as you well know you can select any ground across the, the spectrum there that you that you like sometimes it's it's easier just to use the one that's right next to the pin if you can so you might want to go for this over here so that ground pin there is going to be a one two three four five six seven eight nine pin nine right and that's going to be just below gpio4 which is pin seven okay so the ground you've got so we're going to connect that to ground and now we're going to deal with the data pin so the temperature sensor is going to want to push that uh, that reading out and it's going to go uh, via the the d channel which according to the wiring is the yellow the yellow cable right and this is going to be wired into the gpio4 pin 7. all right so if we take our temperature sensor here let's just draw a crude one over here that's the sleeve all right we've got the wire cable going here right so the red is going to go on to the positive the black is going to go onto the negative red black and now the data which is yellow I believe on this temperature sensor anyway is going to be connected to your uh, your data pin which is going to be pin 7 GPI GPIO 4 on the Raspberry Pi okay let's just turn this here it'll probably look a little bit better this way all right now that 4.7k resistor is going to be bridged across your positive to your um, your data input pin so uh, where are we going to do this let's try to do it from across here right so this is the 4.7k resistor okay and in my case as you saw on that board uh, i wired up three in series to make up the value but anyway i think that you have a single 4.7k resistor from what I saw okay so if we look at the second temperature sensor how it would be wired up is simply temperature sensor number two okay the black sleeve the three wires that come out of it 
you would br you would put the red wire straight on top of the other one you take the black wire straight on top of the other one and then the um, the digital input wire exactly the same straight on top of that one but you'd still keep the same resistor bridging across that you don't need to add uh, an additional resistor this cater is actually for i think running all the way up to 10 of them okay so this is an important part to understand and i think that this will this will this will help you um understand exactly what it is that i mean when i when i explain how it's been connected up to the pi um once again this iterates a very good example as to why i think i need to do a full build video from beginning to end with all the components to show people exactly how it works there's a lot of people who might not feel comfortable with uh working on 110 volts uh, to, to turn this into into sort of a plug uh, plug power control um, but that's the primary reason why I'm actually wanting to drive this to a point where perhaps I could actually send this module out that already has the plugs pre-configured in a box ready to roll just to plug straight into the Raspberry Pi I think it would save uh, some a lot of frustration but uh, I'm not quite there yet at, at this point we're still we're still uh, you know at the, at the hobby level and, and trying to move this forward Okay, so um, this should help you out, and um, you want to take a look at that. Should make sense. And I have a second video for you, which I've created on how, uh, from a software perspective, how to go confirm that all of this is, is working. All right. So just to remember, just to recap, the red, this is the 3.3 volt, which is my pin one. The black, which is any ground that you choose. Um, I have would choose the one right next to the GPIO, GPIO port, makes it easy. And then the yellow cables, both of them, get joined on and they both run into the same pin 7, which is GPIO 4, but the logical pin number is 7. And again, number 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right over here. Okay, so uh, yeah, I hope this helps you, Derek. And uh, please let me know if you need any more help. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that this will this will get you sorted out once you've got the temperature sensors working that's great the website temperature sensors working awesome um, at least we know that everything's communicating the way that it should be and then we can move on to into dealing with the uh, the, the actual relays um, hopefully I should have a video of my own system uh, by then and I can demonstrate how the lights are actually powered on and off and, and so forth all right good luck